Hello everyone, this is Shalina Diva. I am the Purpose Driven Diva, creator of www.shalinadiva.com, the most entertaining, educational, and enlightening website for women. In this video, I am hoping to fire you up, encourage you, inspire you to dream big, to dream bigger than you ever had before, and to truly exercise your faith, knowing that God will do exactly what you have petitioned him to do, okay? So I'm going to jump right into it. Last Saturday, I was hanging out with my three-year-old, and I decided to take him to the bus depot because my son loves the bus. Okay, he loves the public bus. I mean, I guess as a little kid, you will love them too. They're really long and they're big. And every I mean, every time he sees the bus, he's like, Mommy, Mommy, a bus, a bus. Ah, his whole little body is shaking. It is so adorable to see him uh, just look at a bus. I mean, every fiber in his being just gets to moving when he sees a bus. So last Saturday, my son was begging me, Mommy, Mommy, I want to I wanna go in the car. I want to go in the car. So I said, all right, well, I'll take him for a ride. And I said, hey, why not take him to the bus depot? So I took him to the bus depot, uh, hoping that I would really make his day and I would be like super mommy for like at least a couple of weeks. I would reign as super mommy because I thought it would be a great idea to actually take him to a bus and um, allow him to get on a real bus to really, you know, really experience something that he loves so much. And much to my surprise, when I, you know, I asked the, the bus driver, can my son get on the bus? Uh, my son, he started freaking out. He was like, oh no. Oh. I mean, he was so afraid. It was so funny, but it was just really interesting. You know, so I'm like, but son, I thought you would be happy. Like, this is what you wanted. This is what you always ask for. Like, you always want to get on this bus. And so I realized something, and I took a moment. I took a step back, and I said, wow, my son is acting the way most young kids act when they see their favorite uh, cartoon character or Muppet or whatever. Just think about this. Think about a one, two, three, four, five-year-old birthday party, okay? These kids love Elmo. They call him Elmo. They love Elmo. They love Barney. They love Dora. They love Spider-Man. They love these characters. Like, I mean, they watch them every day on TV. And so as a parent, you would think, oh, this is a great idea for my child to see this character to come to the birthday party. But like most parents know, that's not really a good idea. Why? Because this, the, the, the children... As soon as they see Elmo, that big old fuzzy red hairy thing come walking in the door, all those kids go, <laughs> they make a beeline out the door. They're like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't want any parts of that. But we're like, but it's Elmo. Isn't that what you wanted? Isn't that what you said you wanted? Those kids like, mm-mm. See, Elmo's not that big. Elmo lives in the TV. See, in the TV, Elmo's about that big. So the kids are just like, uh-uh, I don't want no parts of this Elmo I see right here. So it's just really funny to see kids act that way. But I just took a step back and applied it to my own life. And I thought, how many times have I really, I mean, really wanted something? And then when it was presented to me or the opportunity to uh, realize it was presented to me, I kind of act the same way my son did with the bus or the way so many other little kids act when they see these, um, these cartoon characters that they love so dearly. We become afraid. We get scared. It's like, oh, we draw back. You know, so my son, in that instant, he actually taught me a lesson. And it made me look at my own life and say, how many things have I believed God for or wanted from God? But then when they presented themselves to me, I just act like a, I just had an Elmo experience and just started... <gasps> Uh, it's really happening. Oh my God. Oh my God. I can't handle it. Like I, I really thought about that. And actually a few months ago, I started working on myself in that area. And this is for all of you who are really hard on yourselves because you're not where you think you should be or whatever. Hold up. First of all, you need to love yourself. Okay. You need to love yourself enough to put yourself in a position to become better. So, okay. Let's just say you don't do something right or whatever. And you need to be able to do that thing in order to go to the next level. I want you to stop beating yourself up because you can't do that. Instead, like for me, I knew that I needed better money management skills. Why? For all of the millions. 
that are going to pour into my life. I'm speaking that into existence, you know, but there's no need for me to, to come into all this money if I can't handle it. So that's just one area that I started praying about and my prayer. And this is what I want you to start praying for yourself. Instead of beating yourself up like, oh man, I'm not this, I'm not that. Stop beating yourself up. Okay. But instead I want you to pray this prayer. Lord, help me to live in the overflow. Teach me, show me how to live in the overflow. And the more you pray that prayer, the more God will prepare you for a lot of those uh, those blessings and those things that you really desire. Okay, so mind you, I had started praying that overflow prayer months ago. So God prepared me in various areas for those things that I want. Couple that with the fact that my son just taught me a lesson about how you can really want something, but are you really prepared for it? Okay, so... In my imagination, because, you know, kids can help you bring out your imagination. I was just like, you know, going back to Elmo, I was just like, wow, you know, what kind of dream or, or hope do I have that, you know, ordinarily I would kind of have like an Elmo experience and kind of have like a meltdown, right? And I was like, I don't want to do that. And I said, well, what is it something that I really want? And I said, you know what? It would be a great idea if I met First Lady Michelle Obama. I just said that in my, like, in my heart that I knew God heard me, but I was like, it would be really nice to meet First Lady Michelle Obama. That was Saturday night, this past Saturday night. And so I started, you know, being like a kid and playing around with it in my imagination, right? And so excuse me because I'm silly, y'all. But I was just like, man, what would it really be like to meet First Lady Michelle Obama? So I was like, hmm, I'd probably be like, hey, First Lady, how you doing? How your kids? How your husband? Girl, I've been following your arm workout and I, my arms off. Fierce, okay i was just like playing around and the more i let my imagination run wild like what i would say when i when i, when I would first meet her the more real it became to me and even though it might seem silly like why would you say something like that to the first lady it was just like i just really believed that i would meet her one day and i just put it out there in a, and i laughed at myself telling myself, why would you say hi your husband hi your kids or whatever anyway i was like whatever but i i really believed that i would meet her one day but so I just, you know, I put it in the back of my mind. But also going back to Elmo, I said, and when I do meet her, I'm not going to have an Elmo experience. I'm not going to be like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's the first time Michelle Obama. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know, whatever. So I let it go, y'all. And I'm still grinding. I'm getting ready to release my, my first book called Fire Your Friends. You better get your copy when it comes out. I'll tell you more about that later. So two days after that whole bus incident, I said I wanted to meet Michelle Obama. I get an email. And the email was like, do you want to meet First Lady Michelle Obama? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then they said, well, click this button right here and then just go and it'll tell you where to go to pick up your ticket. Plain and simple. So I'm sitting there like, okay, yeah, I do want to meet First Lady Michelle Obama and I'm going to click this button because I'm going to get my ticket. And that's that. But then Saturday night came back to me. It's like, remember you put it out there that you really want to meet First Lady Michelle Obama and you really believed it with all the fiber in your being and you started playing around like what you were saying when you met her? I was like, you got to be kidding me. That was Saturday. And then I got the email invitation on a Tuesday night. I was like, wow. I mean, y'all, I really believed that I was going to meet this woman. So that next day I went and got my ticket. It was all fine and good. And then Thursday came. So Thursday, I was just so happy and so excited, you know, just to see her, you know, because it was something that was in my imagination. I'm like, okay, I'm going to meet them, um, see the first lady. So it was fun. So I go there and unfortunately I did not have VIP tickets. So I had, they made me stay in somewhere else. But in my spirit, God was like, that's, that's cool. Cause you, you know, you're my VIP, you're God's VIP. Don't, you know, don't worry about it. So I went down and I met so many wonderful people. I took pictures with the secret service. I met um, the news director from BET. I met all these wonderful people. And so by the end of the, um, the first lady speech, I don't know how, but I ended up in the VIP section, like right up in the front. <laughs> I was closer than some of my friends who actually had VIP tickets, right? And so at the end, she came down. She was so gracious. She's so beautiful in person, so regal, like so inspirational, like you would love her. So she came down to the front to shake hands. And I ain't going to lie. I'm not going to lie, y'all. I was like, oh, oh, my God. She's coming my way. I was kind of having an Elmo moment, right? So I was like, oh, man, First Lady Michelle Obama's coming my way. Now, mind you, with all the respect to the First Lady, I was excited to meet her. But I was even more excited that just the fact that I thought in my mind that 
I could meet First Lady Michelle Obama. I believe with all my being that I could do it. I imagined it and I put in my heart and I really believe, I didn't know how, but I knew that I would meet her. And the fact that like two days later, I get this invitation to meet her and here it was three days, four days later, whatever, I was actually standing in her presence. That meant the world to me because that increased my faith by leaps and bounds. Like people say, if you can, if you can conceive it, you can achieve it. If you can believe it, you can achieve it, whatever. Y'all, that stuff is real. It really, truly works. So for me, seeing her wasn't enough. I was like, okay, seeing her is not good enough. I wanted to touch her. The reason why I wanted to touch her is because in my mind, that cycle would have been completed. To have an idea, to have a thought, to have a dream, to really believe it. And to put it in your heart. I mean, and in this case, there's really nothing I could have done to, like, meet her. You know, I just kept doing what God had me to do in my everyday life. But I still just believed in my heart I would really meet her. And that I was worthy to stand in her presence. That I was worthy of it. You know, I had prayed that God would teach me to live in an overflow. So when he does bring me before great men and women, I don't know how to act. I don't know how to represent God and myself in a, in, in a, in a very respectable way. So throngs of people were like trying to get at her and she was so gracious and friendly and I, I felt like the women in the Bible the woman in the Bible with the issue of blood like if I could just touch but the hem of his garment that'd be good enough for me because remember with all due respect to the first lady I just had to touch her I had to touch that dream I, I had to do that for my own faith and for my own thoughts and so I was pressing and pressing. Then I kind of walked away, but something inside I was like, go back at it again. Keep pressing. And you don't want to push people, but I just kept pressing my way. And then the woman next to me, she actually extended her hand and she shook the first lady's hand. And the first lady started to walk away. The woman didn't let her hand go. And then the um, woman, she backed up. She took the first lady's hand and then she put the first lady's hand into my hand. And the first lady, Michelle Obama, when this happened, her eyes followed where her hand went. So her eyes landed directly upon me and we locked eyes. And she said, go forward, sis. And it was just like, wow, like that really did so much for my faith and, 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 and just for my dreams and my imagination. And you can really think a thing. It doesn't matter what it is. You can really think a thing and it can really come to pass. And just the fact that, and, and once a first lady uh, walked away, the woman next to me, she said, I had to help you because you were so determined. And I admire your determination. She said, you were so determined to touch her and, and shake your hand. And I had to help you. And to me, I thank that woman, but I really felt like it was the hand of God. Because, you know, God can orchestrate stuff for you guys. When he sees your determination to, to be at a certain place, to do something, God will help you. But you just, you got to put in the work. You got to press. You know, you can't give up. You got to press. So, I was over the moon with that, okay? I was like, oh, yes, I touched her. Like, yes, this is wonderful. And I was like, man, what else can I dream up, right? So I was just so happy and caught up about that. I was just like, you know, telling any and everybody about what happened and how happy I was. So I um, I was walking out and I took my, my stilettos off and um, I caught a woman's attention. And she said, girl, I see you took those stilettos off. I said, yeah, girl, because I had them on all day. But then I started testifying and telling her about what just happened to me. And... um. She was so impressed. She said, wow. She said, well, what do you do? I said, I'm an author. I'm a speaker. I'm, I'm you know, a motivational speaker. And she says, okay. She said, well, listen, I'm with the Obama um, main headquarters here in Philly. And um, I'm inviting you to speak at the Obama grand finale event in Philly. Speechless, y'all. I was like, huh? What? I thought, I thought meeting First Lady Michelle Obama was 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 wonderful but here this woman was because i was testifying about how good god is and sharing what god did for me and she was on that same level she appreciated that and she invited me to speak at the grand obama grand finale event so um you guys i am so happy about that and i will share more information coming soon but the purpose of me um sharing this video with you is to encourage you to dream dream big and remember god does not laugh at your dreams he takes them very seriously. And when he sees that you're serious about them, he will make it happen. Always remember that woman taking First Lady Michelle Obama's hand and putting it into mine. And saying that it was my determination that caused her to move and, and act on my behalf like that, okay? So dream again. Dream big again. Exercise your faith. 
God is faithful. He will help you. He will help you bring your dreams to pass, okay? And just remember me, on a Saturday night, I just kind of was playing around with it. Like, ooh, how's it going to be when I meet First Lady Michelle Obama? I'm going to say this. I'm going to say that, you know. It didn't quite work out this way this time. But you know, since this happened, it really encouraged me to dream even more. And you got to dream like this for the places that God is going to take you, the places he's going to take me, and the things he's going to do in our lives. Like, we can't have these Elmo moments where we're, like, freaking out, and, you know, we, we don't, you know, we act like we've never been anywhere and never had anything. Okay, God doesn't want us to be that way. Okay, you guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, join me at www.shalinadiva.com, the most entertaining, educational, and enlightening website for women. Join me on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Shalina Diva. I'm on Twitter at Shalina Diva. Oh, my goodness, I'm on LinkedIn at Shalina Diva. Hook up with me. Join up with me. Um, stay tuned. I have uh, my book is coming out. I want to share more of that information with you. You guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, everything has beauty, including you. It just takes a true diva to see it. And also remember, God does not laugh at your dreams. All right? Dream big, y'all.